our lead official, Vladimir Boyard Tadal and DG Nelson are your officials. Tonight we tip it off for our fourth and final game and TCU not wasting any time. Throws it up. It's Chuck O'Bannon Jr. About that for a start. <laughs> Easily could have been called a foul. Great job by O'Bannon. Been able to score that one. Don't blink, you'll miss a bucket. TCU coming in a 21 and 12 overall record. Arizona State 23 and 12. And we'll see early on. You know, TCU obviously is the more rested team, as you alluded to with Arizona State winning in the first four. We'll see if they have fresh legs early in the game. Here's some fresh legs. Mike Miles Jr. with his first bucket. You talked about Mike Miles being a physical guard. He hasn't always been that size. I've been knowing him since he's been in sixth grade. Well, he's been doing some work, Avery. <laughs> he's been in the weight room. For the last two years I've seen him and called his game, he's looked like that. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Hurley, one of the most recognizable names in college basketball. Fourth career NCAA tournament appearance as a player. He had a record 18-2, swatting it out of there. And Bennett Jr. showing his muscle offensively and defensively. As you can see, the chance to recover because of his athleticism and his size. They are a physical group for TCU. Roster. All guys get after it. You mentioned the fresh legs, Avery, and, and Bobby Hurley was uh, intentional about their their trip. You know, landed what you took the charter with them, and they landed at what time? 3 a.m. Okay. Yeah. And Hotel at about 4 a.m. <laughs> Right. That's, that's late or early, or however you want to evaluate it. It took kind of a mental day, kind of a walk-through day, very light day yesterday, as you can imagine. I do a lot of mental reps to try to prep for this game against TCU. Four to shoot. Horn pump fake. Well short. And it touched the baseline, so it'll be TCU basketball. One of the things Coach Hurley talked about Offensively, they got to be strong with the ball against this tough, hard-nosed TCU defense. Frankie Collins draws the matchup with Mike Miles Jr. They call them what kind of their, their most physical defender on the perimeter. And we got a foul on the floor. It'll be Devin Cambridge with his first. Jamie Dixon, uh, TCU to four NCAAs, three as a head coach, one as a player. I think there'll be a lot of fouls called in this game. I'm just anticipating that one, Avery. There's two teams that are very physical defensively. Well, we'll see if you're right, Smitty. At the end of this half, that's what the stat sheet's for. We'll see if you're right or wrong. <laughs> Junior. I'm right about him because you told me a lot about him, and I got a chance to watch him last year in this tournament. He is fantastic. He can flat out score. This TCU Ooh. team returns a lot of players, Smitty, from that team from last year. We all got to see this team lose a heartbreaker to Arizona in the round of 32. Playing with a little chip here, perhaps. What a spin move for the Michigan transfer, Frankie Collins. How big was that with that pressure? Frankie just drove, used his skill set. We. It's a first look for Emmanuel Miller. It's a two. This looks similar to the start that Arizona State had in, in their last game. So we'll see if they can string together a few stops here. And they're back on defense. Arizona State starting out one for five from the field. Cambridge, it's Devin Cambridge, well off to the left side. TCU hasn't missed a shot. Perfect four for four going into this offensive possession. That hesitation, Miles Jr. is the first miss. Oh, yeah. Lots of bodies tangling up with that. Frankie Collins commits his first. Yeah, whenever there's penetration, even if a guard misses the shot, because you've broken down the defense, it sucks in other defenders from the weak side. It's easier to get offensive rebounds. 
You know, I, I thought he had rolled his leg. And, and Oof. Glad he's fine. Yeah. Xavier Court shooting while he was fouled. So he has two free throws coming. Watch whip around coverage of all men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with Fast Break presented by Nissan in the March Madness live app. Scan the QR code now to download. The one thing that you always fear when you're coming off of an extraordinary offensive performance, mm -hmm. slow starts. Cambridge. <laughs> Here's Damian Ball bringing it across the timeline. We talked about his minute penetration. Yes. Penetrate, nice kick. Driving kick in that situation. We know O'Bannon is a streaky shooter. Good kick out. O'Bannon got his feet set. Felt good on that one. This is a team where, where no player has made more than 43s this year. Chuck O'Bannon sitting at 37 coming into tonight. Make it 38 after that one falls. I think the key with TCU, you know, Mike Miles is healthy. There was a stretch in the season where he was injured, and even when he came back, it took him about two games to get back in rhythm. Yeah, and TCU was was one and four, really, in that stretch of, of Mike Miles Jr. being absent. Collins taking it all the way to the rack. He's got four points. I love the way Frankie Collins is attacking this pressure. They're not knocking him off his stride or his angles, and he's strongly finishing. Sit down to Jacoby Coles for his first bucket. Damian Ball just did a nice job, Lisa, of patience, let the play develop, and a nice bounce pass. Well, they're shooting 85% from the field right now. TCU. Well, taking a page out of the, the first four book here for Arizona State. Six of seven from the field. Get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. Well, for Arizona State, the Cambridge brothers have been a huge part of their success, and in particular, a last-second prayer by Desmond Cambridge Jr. Andy Katz, also a part of their success. Well, listen, Lisa, how did Arizona State get in the NCAA Tournament? It was by this shot, not a heave, from Desmond Cambridge. He'll call it a shot that knocked off rival Arizona the last week and a half of the season. And the Cambridge brothers were a package deal. They wanted to play one more season together. Desmond went from Brown to Nevada to Arizona State. Devin went to Auburn, then Arizona State. And technically, Devin actually has one more year left that he could play, but they have loved playing for Arizona State, and this was their dream. One more season or one season to play together and make it to the NCAA tournament. They had reports, South Carolina, Georgia, Ole Miss, all interested, a, a bunch of schools. You know, they announced on social media, because that's where you do it these days, right, that they wanted to be a package deal. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, I don't think they're going to count the bucket. They won't. Gaffney with his first. Well, not count it, but he's definitely <laughs> but, but, sending a message. <laughs> yes. One of the things uh, Coach Bobby Hurley talked about was he told his team every game starting you know, at Stanford game February, February 9th is going to be like an elimination game. And that's the way they played the latter part of the season. Wells misses the shot and the rebound to Washington. Warren Washington, another one of those transfers, played at Nevada with Desmond Cambridge Jr. And off the hands here of Washington, here he comes to say hello to us. First turnover of the night. I'm impressed by you and Avery. Y'all didn't flinch. I was getting out. I was making. Woo! Sidestep, Avery, you going to protect I me? I thought you were old school. I am. I can't get hurt. <laughs> Mess up your golf game. Yes. I like to think of it as the Kobe reaction, you know, when he didn't flinch. Yeah. Mess up that eight handicap. Eight. Okay. Being generous. <laughs> Good job, size it up. Shoot that short shot. 
love the way he plays. He plays anywhere from two, three, four, or five. <laughs> but it's TCU roster. You notice Coach Dixon was upset on that situation. He wanted more guys on the offensive glass. Coming off a great performance intake. He was special. He was special in that game in Dayton coming off the bench with 16 points, six for seven from the field. Career high for him against Nevada. He's a really good defender. He'll spend some time on Mike Miles Jr. For Micah Peavy. Warren Washington do a good job of gobbling up these rebounds, these defensive rebounds. For the Wildcats. TC, for the Sun Devils. Yeah, TCU started out six of seven. They're all for their last three from the field. Yeah, Arizona State heating up a little bit. Alonzo Gaffney with the baseline bucket. They'll make an easy shot. Difficult, Gaffney, and knock it down. And I think it's fade. And I think, Smitty, that's what you were really impressed with how many contested shots yes. they made in their last yeah. game. That's what scores like yourself. That's what you watch. When you're good, you're going to get a lot of contested shots. <laughs> you're going to get a lot of open ones. It's Warren out to go. Warren again. The Sun Devils are clawing back into this game. An 8 to 2 run. So we'll see, you know, if TCU, they're 2 for 4 from the three point line. They're not really a good three-point shooting team, and if they can't make threes on a consistent basis, Arizona State's defense is going to really shrink the floor. Neal pulling and firing. Wow! He, he brought his shooting stroke from Dayton all the way over here to Denver. And the sophomore with a lot of confidence. Well, look at the score now, 15 to 13. TCU is up with the momentum to the Sun Devils. Damian Ball makes it off. They got Warren Washington with his first. Look at Gaffney at the top, tying his shoe within the play of this offensive possession. And then, oh, by the way, no problem. Oh, just to the baseline. Yeah. Nothing about that, too, by the way. As cool as ice. He has some great size. I mean, he is 6'9". The length all over the place and watching him warm up. He was knocking down three after three. Hasn't shot it well from the three point line, but he has a great stroke. Got that big wingspan, too. Seven, three and a half. Don't forget the half inch wingspan. A little one, two, two press. Change the rhythm. Arizona State handles it nicely. Luther Mohammed, transfer out of Ohio State, has checked in. Now for the Sun Devils. Set play here to force this switch for Neil. from Gaffney. Well, he's two for two since he tied his shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful look from Desmond. <laughs> Arizona State is six for its last seven, by the way. Miles Jr. does a good job of, of drawing another foul, that time against Duke Brennan, his first. No look. Heads up. Jamie, what do you need to tighten up defensively here in the latter part of the first half? We had a good start defensively, not as good as down the stretch. They've hit some tough shots and fall away as that layup hurt us there. But uh, uh, the ball pressure's got to be better, and uh, we got to communicate better on our switches. Thanks, Jamie. All right. Eight seconds now to shoot. Two seconds on the shot clock. Firing. And we had 
back the other way. And if you guys notice on this last possession, Luka Muhammad did a really nice job of denying Mike Miles Jr. the ball to try to force the other four guys to create something, some offense for TCU. Great catch, Avery. He did a phenomenal job. You got, you got to work to do that. I mean, the strength of Mike Miles Jr. can get open with his shoulders and his girth. But Luther was all over that play. Xavier Core picked up his personal, gave it back to Arizona State. Here they are on this offensive possession. Cambridge Jr. And the founder on the floor, Duke Brennan, got all kinds of contact. See, yeah, so in this situation, you can you can barely see Luther Muhammad down underneath the basket, but look at him. He's sticking with Mike Miles. Now he's on the weak side. You see how he shoots the gap right in here and trying to force the other four guys to make a play. That's a strategy that Arizona State's going to try to employ against TCU. And we'll see if TCU can make an adjustment offensively and get Mike Miles open. Usually when teams do that, you know, the solution is, is Mike Miles Jr. sets a screen, and then Luther is nowhere to be able to help because he's over denying. Muhammad gets the bucket on the other end. Duke Brennan, though, picks up a foul. And as a coach, when you're looking at a scouting report, especially how you want to attack a team defensively, what you're thinking about is what are we willing to live with? And Arizona State, they're probably saying in their minds, Mike Miles scoring 25 or more points tonight, that's not a recipe for success. Mike Miles Jr. leading the way with his seven points, make it eight. Reminder to watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. An upset victim. I'm sure everybody watching this has heard by now the 16 seed knocking off the number one for the second time in NCAA tournament history. And Smitty, one of the things we talked about last night at dinner, if he scores 20 or more, 25 points, then they have to shut down everybody. Else. Right. He's going to put pressure on him. Has struck fire a little bit. Quick five points for him off the bench. <laughs> Luther is into this game, slapping the floor, getting down on the deepest of stance. Hands high, <laughs> top your feet, big fella. And for good reason, the first lead of the game here for the Sun Devils. The Arizona State is bigs. They're capable of getting out, impacting the ball, and returning to the paint to protect the basket. Damian Ball, wild shot. It'll stay here, though. And that shot didn't hit the rim, so the, the shot clock sits at four seconds. Jamie Dixon kind of reminding his team, look, you got four seconds to work with from the baseline. Nice play. Yeah, great. And a foul against Arizona State. And look at Bobby Hurley's Bobby reaction. Hurley. These last two calls, <laughs> he, he has been animated and can't believe the calls. Devin Cambridge with his second. So you have Brendan with two, Devin Cambridge with two. And, and that's what you call situational basketball. You're in football, you have offense, defense, special teams. That's one of their special plays with a short clock. Nice green ball, Bannon. Yep. Threw off Arizona State's defense. And they had Mike Miles Jr. taking the ball out the best passer. But if that pressure again coming. The Cambridge Jr. Boy, that was a quick move for Desmond Cambridge Jr. And his first point, if you can believe it, 0 for 4 before that. I mean, he has a neck. Wiry strong. And a very quick first step. Leads the team in scoring. He's shy of 14 points per game. Oh, and another foul against Gaffney. That's his second. But it's goaltending, oh, I think. It's goaltending. Yep, you're right. Let's watch this. Good pass by Mike Miles Jr. 
Yes, great call. Ball hit the glass first. So they'll count the bucket, and the last field goal significant. TCU's last field goal before that, 15 minutes and 41 seconds. Allie, you book. Went awry, and the finish there for Washington. Yeah, they're really long inside. Washington is a guy that just, he doesn't quit on plays offensively or defensively. He's got, he embodies the team spirit and what they're trying to accomplish with their culture. Coles leaves it short, another opportunity, blocks. Gaffney was all over it. Size and length for the Sun Devils. Before that miss, Arizona State had scored on its last eight possessions. Gaffney with the block, he's 6'9". We have Warren Washington out there, that's a seven footer. Remember that wingspan we talked about, 7'3". And a half. And a half, Lisa. Don't forget the half. Not forgetting that. It's impressive for TCU to even be in the NCAA tournament. They have they had 15 different starting lineups in their first 25 games. Yeah, 10 different starting lineups in the first 10. <laughs> It's like an NBA lineup. You see 15 different starting lineups in a season. Danny and Paul. And Jacoby Cole staying with it. Kind of hunting down that two. Yeah, he carved out some space and used that pump fake and said, hey, shot blockers, try to go get this one. I think that was one of those oops situations from Danny and Ball. <laughs> he thought about shooting it, he thought about passing it, and got caught in between. Law is called for the touch foul. 25-24 here in Denver. Bobby, what worked so well to get back into this game? Well, we didn't get any stops early in the game. They made everything. So we just had to get our feet under us. We started getting stops, sort of rebounding. Our activity took over. Like Frankie, Collins getting a few baskets for us to stabilize things early in the game. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, somehow they had to cool off a very hot TCU offense. Remember, they started six of seven, but they're two of their last 11 cents. Now this is a situation where Mike Miles Jr. is on the bench, trying to give him a couple of minutes here. We'll see how long TCU can play without him. Oh, quick hands forcing the turnover. Here comes Collins on the push. Gets nothing out of that. Luther Muhammad with the quick hands and quick stop. TCU is a fast break team. They worked on their fast break this summer more than any time in Coach uh, Dixon's tenure at TCU. Yeah, and what does it result in? It results in uh, leading the, the nation at fast break points this year. About 18 that they get per game. Collins, what a shot! Tosses it high off the glass, and I mean high off the glass. I know you exci get excited about dunks, man. Th those are the plays that excite me. Well, I have this segment called Smitty's Under the Rim, so I like those under rim plays. Let's watch it. Drive the basketball, Collins, with your left hand. Get it up high off the glass. And boy, we have a game here in Denver. So that's commendable in terms of ball handling, taking care of the ball. Rarely do we see it. He almost jinxed it. At this point in the first half, only one turn. DJ Horn applying the pressure defensively. A three-point look there for O'Bannon Jr. What a floor game so far for Frankie Collins. He's been there stabilizing. He set the tone early, had the first four points for Arizona State. Jacoby Coles with his first personal. So coming out of the timeout with Arizona State, that was a look, that was a play that was designed for Desmond Cambridge to come off of a screen, but the play broke down. Frankie Collins with the ball. Over to DJ Horn. Pulls from the elbow. Miles Jr. chases it down. He's either trying to hunt down for some fast break points. The three falls. He's found his rhythm. Chuck O'Bannon Jr. It's all about making your teammates better. Make the right play. 
consistently. Nice pass. It was. Jamie and Bile did a nice job of breaking down the defense and getting a better shot. Guy who averages seven and a half points per game is the leading scorer right now with 10. The game's leading scorer with 10. Collins nearly got tied up. Two seconds here to shoot. DJ Horn did plenty of that in Dayton. And that's what you practice in terms of your spacing so that you can make passes almost with your eyes closed because you know where your teammates are going to be on the floor. They're not going to count the bucket. But the foul against Frankie Collins, his second. It's a lot of time left. I would think Bobby Hurley was up for him. And he's going to do exactly that. You know, Frankie Collins, Arizona State was the first to contact him when he answer, entered the transfer portal and leaving Michigan. Even had a conversation with Lou Dort, played at Arizona State. He said that made a huge difference. He saw him play in person, went to prep school in Arizona State's backyard. Which made playing, of course, for the Sun Devils all that more attractive. Been a wonderful addition to this roster. And good size at the guard position. It was pretty interesting. Arizona State's band's response to Arizona losing on yesterday at practice. I think I heard a cheer. <laughs> I was wondering what all of the commotion was. <laughs> Miller trying to tap it away. Cambridge Junior. Still launched out one from deep. And Arizona State shooting 50% from three. Miles Jr. Big rebound for Brennan. In full effect, what you were looking at, Smitty, that in, in some of the bracket competition, no perfect brackets left? No perfect brackets. Two. I think that's correct. Out of what, 20 million? Something like that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, just, you just randomly threw out that 20 million. <laughs> uh, he's, he's pretty accurate. Right. <laughs> I heard 30 million, but okay. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> Lisa always tries to upstage me. <laughs> Come on. Man. That is so not true. <sighs> Bench points big for Arizona State, plus 10 advantage. And TCU started this game with a lead, 15 to four. Mike Miles Jr. doing all he can to kid it right back there. He cuts the lead to one, bullseye. If you're gonna lose anybody on TCU's team, you can't lose Mike Miles Jr. I can't give up an easy wide open looks. He's the game high now with 14 points. When you come out of those three-quarter court presses, when you get back in half court, everybody has to know where you're in zone or lane. Horn, what a beautiful step back of the high arcing shot. T.J. Horn can flat out score. Imagine about 12.4 points for the Sun Devils. He's done about 6-1, but he can make shots. Oh, what a block. Cambridge Jr. came over. And that's not unusual. For Arizona State, they're averaging about 4.7 blocks a game. Very bad scoring here for the Sun Devils, trying the foul on the shot. Chuck O'Bannon Jr. Let's watch this block shot. Cover ground mm, and go get it. Desmond doing a nice job. He's only 6'4. Wow. Look at his head. Look at his head all close wow. to the rim. In my dreams, Smitty. Yeah, you, 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 you never played above that rim, did you, Avery? You used to slap glass on layups. Bottom of the backboard. Or the rubber. The, it's okay. Bottom of the net. Guys, we, we should mention TCU is without one important player and a, and a post player. Andy Katz has more on that. Yeah, that's right. TCU center Eddie Lampkin Jr. entered the transfer portal on Monday after leaving the team just before the Big 12 tournament last week in Kansas City. In a social media post last week that was quickly deleted 
Lampkin appeared to accuse head coach Jamie Dixon of mistreatment. Now, I talked to Jamie Dixon last night and those around the program. They said that what led to Lampkin's decision was injuries and lack of playing time. And no one that I have spoken to gave an indication that there were other concerns. A reminder that post was deleted. So Lampkin, who has a big part of that game you guys covered last year against Arizona, no longer on the team and in the transfer portal. Yeah, he came to life in that Arizona game in the NCAA tournament. 20 points, 14 rebounds, a lot of personality. A lot of size for these TCU Horn Frogs that they're missing. Yeah, and, and, and that's significant and could play a part here tonight. You've got Emmanuel Miller who might have to play the five. And basically one or two plays from advancing to the Sweet 16. Yeah, well, there's a, a play towards the end of regulation involving this man, Miles Jr. And, oh, wow, the foul is almost there for TCU. And we'll head back the other way. Miles Jr., you know, when, when TCU was was accepted its bid into the tournament or saw their, where they were going at their selection Sunday, one of the first questions to Mike Miles Jr. was uh, was that play towards the end of regulation. Now, they had a chance to win an overtime against Arizona. Miles Jr. with the pickoff. But a lot of times in that situation, you have to fake one, make one, fake a pass, make a pass. Arizona State was really good um, in the first four with their zone offense, so TCU is going to st stick with their zone offense and force Arizona State to score against it. Trying to slow a little rhythm, take away a little pace from the Sun Devils. They've caught a little rhythm. The zone is trying to take away that advantage. Cambridge Jr. getting doubled up. TCU takes it away. Damian Ball quickly out to Miles Jr. Oh, we're in the Mile High City, and I think he got a Mile High. <laughs> what we call that, a posterization? You remember <laughs> earlier where he attempted one that didn't count? Yep. Wow. The answer, Cambridge Jr. for three. Look like Mike Mouse. Injured himself. Uh oh. Was it on the dunk? Oh boy. Mm. Was it on the dunk or when he was contesting the three point shot? I'm not sure. No matter what it is, it's not great for TCU right now. the finish ball with the assist and he's walking back and Arizona State calls a timeout he still took a pose yep the adrenaline was still yeah. pumping what a ferocious dunk wow this is a matchup that Arizona State wants horn again Arizona State feels confident that they can win that matchup when Cole switches out. Coming up on the AT&T at the half, scores, highlights, the latest NCAA tournament news. AT&T at the half, just seconds away. His second personal. I think that seven, three, and a half, half wings, man, played a factor on this one. He was all over this shot. And there's a foul by O'Bannon. Lonzo Gaffney, 64% free throw shooter. Transfer from Ohio State, played a year there, 17 games, then went the Juco route for a year at Northwest Florida State College. And Mike Miles Jr. back in. Great sign for TCU. 
Wonderful side for TCU. Gets it up quickly to Miller. Who fires? Just off the mark. And Miles Jr. limping off. It'll be interesting to see if he makes a return here in the second half. Meanwhile, we check in with Andy, who's with Bobby Hurley. All right, Bobby, you played in Dayton, what, 48 hours ago? You have Avery coming with you? You're showing no signs of any fatigue. How come? Well, we're in great condition. We got great athletes, and these guys are winners. Uh, we battled back. We started a little slow. Got our defense going late in the half. That's that block by Gaffney epitomizes like our defense, and uh, what a play at the end of the half. All right, second 20 minutes. How do you maintain this pressure and really apply it to TCU? Look, we got to just keep them in front. Miles is a tough guard. They got guys who can make get hit the paint. Got to keep them out of the lane. We got to contest shots and rebound. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Andy. And all those guys exceeded their scoring average. And we see Mike Miles Jr. trotting back out on the court to begin the second half. That brings us to Andy Katz. He spoke to Jamie Dixon. Yeah, Jamie Dixon told me he was fine. The athletic trainer for TCU also said he just re aggravated, re -aggravated that right knee on the dunk. As for what he told the team, well, look, they got to guard better. They were shooting too many threes, and we saw they have to be much more contested. And something I've never seen before in covering the NCAA tournament. Jamie Dixon came out with eight minutes left, had his players shooting because he wanted to get more shots up. They were barely in at halftime. <laughs> practice, 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 Andy. And with Mike Miles Jr., the injury Andy is referencing on January 28th, Mike extended that same right knee and missed five games. We had mentioned that TCU was one and four in the absence of Miles Jr. because of that injury. And now we'll figure out if some of Mike Miles Jr.'s teammates feel that the need to be more aggressive offensively. And with that extended time that Andy was talking about, did not even touch a ball and did not even take a shot during that time. He was on the bench meditating, getting his thoughts together to play this second half. Arizona State right on a 59% shooting first half. Kind of rivaling that maybe that 68% first half shooting in the first four. You can just feel that Arizona State coming out to start this second half. A little bit more energy than what they had to start the game. I mean, I, I think this group has done an excellent job. You you saw them in Dayton. They're here to turn it around right now and play with this. Ooh. In Ooh. the face! Kind of tuck! Collins is all about that kind of action. Frankie Collins! Don't bring the house down. Oh. Can we see that one more time, Lisa? What did this, what did Frankie eat for his pregame meal? <laughs> wow! <laughs> Don't scream on him. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Impressive. Today. And I'm glad with the emotions that the referees didn't call him for a taunting. Just let him play a little bit. Let him play. And Emmanuel Miller with the foul. Now one of the things that you don't want to do when you're down coming out of halftime is, you know, commit three or four quick fouls in the first five minutes because that's closer to being in the bonus defensively. Yeah, and the confidence level right now for the Sun Devils is off the chain. They are moving the basketball. They're feeling good, especially on the defensive end. Pass deflected. Just the fourth turnover, though, for Arizona State. You mentioned Avery, a very you know, clean basketball game in terms of taking care of the basketball for both of these teams. Post touch for Court. Xavier Court trying to go right off of the left hand. Right off the mark with the putback. That's, a re that's how you rebound out of your area if you chuck O'Bannon Jr. They need those, they need more plays like that. Boy, he wouldn't got that one. 
You know, second chance points, TCU needs to try to deny the wing passes when they're one pass away, to create some turnovers so that they can get out of their fast break game. It's Washington with the finish, he has six. And a seven point advantage now for the Sun Devils. Alice Jr. yet to take a shot here in the second half. Just Bob it just lost it. Got tripped up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Showtime, Devin Cambridge style. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he made that one look easy. Defense turn into offense for the Sun Devils. Arizona State looking for some more. Slam dunk contest needs to have a change in philosophy. What an incredible dunk by Devin Cambridge with the reverse. He's defensively and it's paying off for them. With that Cambridge dunk, 10 players have played on the Arizona State side. 10 players have now scored on the Arizona State side. Miles Jr.'s first shot, well short. First shot of the second half. And stepped on the sideline. Those are the plays as a coach, that just gives you a nightmare because yes. that's that's controllable. Stepping on the sideline or the baseline. And, and you know what gives players a nightmare? Doing plays like that in front of the coach. <laughs> right. In front yeah. of in front of your bench. So how they Wells? Off to Miles Jr. An offensive foul call, a moving screen on Jacoby oh Coles. Hey, tune in inside to March Madness and check out the play of the day presented by Buick Encore GX. 16 more minutes left to play. Collins never saw TCU coming from behind. Here's Miles Jr. And gets fouled. I believe the foul's going to go against Neal. It looked like coming out of this last time out, TCU was in a full court press, full court trap. Arizona State did a nice job of breaking the trap, but TCU stayed in the play, continued, poked it out from behind, and that led to a fast break opportunity. So Mike Miles Jr. with an opportunity to get his first points of the first half. Those numbers you saw, or the second half, I should say, those numbers you saw were all first half numbers as we check in with Andy Katz. You know, piggybacking off of what Avery just said, I was listening to the huddle. And they wanted everyone to crash the board. So everyone was going downhill because all five guys needed to go to the backboard. Ball never got there because they stole it. But that was the reason everyone was going toward the basket. All five guys need to rebound. That was stressed in that huddle. It's great stuff, Andy. 18 points now for Miles Jr. All over to Collins. Quickly to Cambridge, back to Neal. Now eight seconds here to shoot. Six seconds to shoot. Neal finding his way into the paint. Loose ball, Neal gets it back. Shot clock resets to 20. And when you're looking at Arizona State, during the regular season, they shot 41% from the field. In the tournament, they're 55 for 87, 63% in the tournament. That is red hot shooting. We wondered if they could back up their best offensive performance in Dayton with a respectable offensive performance here. Miles Jr. again will head back to the free throw line. Momentum is turning right now. Arizona State not getting good looks. Sometimes bad offense leads out to early offense for the opponents. And I think right now, if you're Arizona State, find a way to penetrate and get your two feet in the paint, whether off the dribble, off the pass, in the post. And TCU finding a way to score. They've been good at the free throw line here tonight. 92% going into these two free throws. Best Coke ever? Only one way to find out. Take a taste. Two possessions ago, TCU employed that full court press. Would you go back to it, Smitty? Well, I think right now is, yes. They're trying to speed up the game, and they, they've got some momentum. I wouldn't all out try to get a steal, but I'll just try to take some clock off. Yeah. Miles 
Jones Jr.'s first miss from the free throw line. Nine of ten here tonight. Curious to see how many minutes he plays here in the second half. Here's the ball movement. We want to get the ball in the post. And now, you know, big turn into a double team. Collins, a dribbling exhibition. And a shot clock violation. Also, if you're Arizona State, the Sun Devils, DJ Horn has not touched the basketball in a long time. You see a little frustration from DJ coming off the court. Yeah. The third turnover for Arizona State in the last four possessions. You look at how important Mike Miles Jr. is. Scoring production, that tells the story right there. And again, he'll go back to the foul line. He is living at that line. Doing an excellent job putting pressure on the defense. He's so strong, so compact. It's just good to see him back in the game. He started off the half just kind of trying to find his rhythm, but he's moving a lot better now. Sitting on 19 points. Now his ninth 20-point game of the season, the 21st 20-point game of his career. Lisa and Avery, when you get a chance to get to the free throw line, the coach can get subs in, he can get his defense set, he can bark out some plays, and it slows the pace and rhythm down for a team that's been behind. Well, been up. Chipping away at this lead. You guys have said it, you feel the momentum shifting. We thought this would be a highly contested game. And it's shaping up to be that way. Into the lane, Washington challenge, Miles Jr. Cut up for the block. And that knee's feeling okay. Now three to shoot. The shot clock didn't reset. Washington had to throw it up. Draws the foul. Wow, what a block by Miles Jr. Two hands, straight up, seven footer, Warren Washington. And <laughs> look at my Mike Miles Jr. And meet you at the apex. Mm. Yeah, that. Not many 6 2 guys would make that play. That was an offensive foul, by the way, on Chuck O'Bannon Jr. So his third. And that is the first break that Mike Miles Jr. gets in the second half. And stays on the bench, doesn't go on a stationary bike. Not back to the locker room. Look out, Muhammad had to get across the timeline. Luther Muhammad taking some contact, perhaps. And Emmanuel Miller, his second. One of the things that Coach Hurley talked about with Luther Muhammad, he said he's just a tough kid. It hasn't been a smooth journey for him, but he's hung in there and persevered. Jamie Dixon's hot. I think he was looking at the replay on the monitor above here in the arena. Saw something that he disagreed with, obviously. With this monitor, Lisa, you can see everything. <laughs> Anything you want to see with this monitor. Ball arena. First time I've been here, boy, this is a beautiful screen. Follow Highlight Her for everything you need to see her do in sports and culture. Scan the QR code now and don't miss another moment. And Mike Miles Jr. didn't sit out long. Throw ending a three minute and 19 second scoring drought for Arizona State. And during this time of the year, 
more scoring droughts, the more you can stay away from. This is win or go home. Damian Biles did a nice job of making up for that turnover. Didn't see the defender, but boy, did he get back and take this one right in the chest. Yep, giving up your body. We got a under 12 media timeout coming. It'll stay here. And I say that just with considerations, too, on, on how you're, you're working with Mike Miles Jr. Wrestling him. You see Bobby Hurley's now hot. Smitty, did I ever have that look on my face when I was coaching? Yes. A lot. Miller fronts it. Who can run the best half-court offense when they don't have a, a fast break? Which team can execute in the half court? That's the biggest question here in this last 12 minutes and 26 seconds. TCU is 0 for its last seven going into this possession. Here comes Miller. Coles with the offensive rebound. Coles trying to put it up. Coles does exactly that. Big time rebound and put back for Coles. Carved out some space. Possession game. Aren't just leave for Arizona State has been 11. be interesting if TCU is within four to six points with five minutes to go if Mike Miles in that same situation will pass the ball or if he'll try to take knock down a three or be a more aggressive on offensive we got another moving screen Denver Arizona State and TCU look at the nine turnovers for Arizona State you said oh it's not that much but when you factor in five turnovers in the last ten possessions it's when they're turning the ball over here in the second half Timeout look here for TCU. Damian Ball scoreless here. 0 for 3 in this game. No points. Miles 2 there for 3. PDP trying to save it. It's a race. And he stepped on the sideline. So Ball made a great effort to try to save it, but his foot was on the sideline. And with this TCU lineup, Smitty, on the court, Really, only have two three-point shooters with Ball and and Mike Miles Jr. And as you alluded to, Ball is scoreless. Yeah, but he's got, he played a great floor game. And he is definitely scoreless. Got Emmanuel Miller for his third personal. And neither team has made a three in the second half. Yeah, 0 for 4 for TCU, 0 for 2 for Arizona State. DJ Hall has been quiet. Eight points. They pointed out Smitty has gotten a lot of opportunities in the second half. He has DJ Horn as you can see, hasn't got a lot of attempts at all. Three for six. It's a three-point game. That's a good sign for TCU. It gets a chance to see what go through the basket. <laughs> Excellent ball movement. And his first points of the game coming at about the 10-minute mark. Mm. Bad shot. TCU building off of a 10-2 run. 
Jim Powell, the basket won't count. It's waved off. Give Emmanuel Miller credit. In that situation, he had the favorable matchup with the smaller Desmond Cambridge on him in that situation. Yeah, Emmanuel Miller is 6'7", 220. Knew he had the advantage down low. It's Cambridge Jr. second person. And Miller's first trip to the free throw line. TCU now 15 of 17 as a team from the charity strike. Remember they trailed by as many as 11. Arizona State had that largest lead of the game with 16 and a half minutes left to play in the game. It's been a free throw line for TCU in his half. Miller's their blue guy. He just does a little bit of everything. the turnover here's Coles an opportunity to take the lead TCU to Miles Jr. Oh, Coles with the rebound Pump fake he gets fouled have to earn it from the charity strike a lot of credit goes to Emmanuel Miller deflection got on the ball got that turnover for the Horn Frogs but watch him with quick hands TJ Horn comes off may have that but then he goes to get it and you like, gotta love Coles. Lisa, you called it. Great pump fake to get himself to the free throw line once again. And we talked about Miller. He's like a Swiss Army knife. Mm, big miss. Hey, Ernie Johnson, Jay Wright, Candace Parker, Seth Davis, all the highlights and analysis on a, a big day two. March Madness presented by Buick. It's next only on True TV. Tied at 54. Coles checks out. TCU on a 13 to 2 run. Collins crosses over, rims out. Another opportunity for Arizona State. Over to Horn. Huge bucket. Arizona back on top. Even though Horn made that shot, you got to give Jemiah Neal credit. And both teams, really, they've made the extra pass, which has led to three-point shots from the watch. We got some whistles here. We got two different officials blowing a whistle. Miles Jr. is still underneath his the basket that they're attacking. Yeah, I, think I think he, he was, wanted a foul call. He wanted a foul, Lisa. Yeah, he did. He didn't get it. Instead, they called a foul on Xavier Court, his third. Seventeen fouls for TCU, and so Arizona State now in the bonus. See, TCU, their bench players, is, they're really on the short string. They just trying to provide a little bit of a quick 30-second, one-minute blow for the starters. A 2-3 zone here from Arizona State. in the man to man here. Bennett Jr. fades away. It's a tough shot. And Coles got caught. Three now on Jacoby Coles. It's the first time Arizona State's played zone two. I think so. Good possession to be able to take them out their rhythm. Back to the free throw line and a long time both these teams are in the ball. Eight minutes and three seconds left. That was a huge miss though on the last trip by Gaffney on the front end. Oh, 
Nice history. Mike Mao Jr. trying to save a little time. Gain a few more seconds to attack this zone. Let's see what they got. It's gone. And the foul against Gaffney, who was boxing out Miller. <laughs> we, we talked about this game. I had Florida Atlantic in the Conference USA Tournament Finals. They beat UAB. Told Smitty before the game that they're a dangerous team. Yes, he did. I can attest to that. Oh, oh, get up! That's a three. And it'll be TCU basketball. It's been physical. Smitty, I think you said that from the outset. Yep. So we'll, we'll, see, we'll look at the fouls. It's been a lot, Avery. Eh? Look at the free throw line attempts. <laughs> 34 combined fouls between these two teams. 13 free throw attempts for Arizona State, 21 free throw attempts for TCU. We still got seven minutes left to play. Miles Jr. Gets a shot, in and out. Good rebound by Washington. Arizona State's one foul away from being in a double bonus, and TCU two fouls. Washington with the pass touch gets the bounce. That looked like the Colt Brenner play that we saw early in the game. Remember how the Creighton opened the floor? Partially blocked on that Miles offering, he goes into the baseline crowd and still is, is slow to get up. Went into a, a camera person there on the baseline. Let's watch Washington right here. Seal, have him on his back, maybe got away with a little hook, but then that's a nice jump hook for the bucket. Post play is still alive in basketball. The little guards always want to take these threes, Avery, and shoot all these jumpers. There's nothing wrong with the paint. Are you venting right now? I'm just talking to you. <laughs> One word can change everything. Shazam, Fury of the Gods, now playing only in theaters, rated PG-13. Get your tickets now. Jacoby Coles picked up his fourth personal. The reason why DJ Horn's at the free throw line. Devin Cambridge with four personal fouls on the Arizona State side. The only two players, Coles for TCU and Cambridge for Arizona State with four personals. Coles for three, not there. DJ Horn has had a nice second half for the Sun Devils, getting more touches, getting more possessions. It's going to be important for TCU to try to get a stop here and not go down by double digits. Eight point advantage here right now, Cambridge Jr. Good ball movement, patience here on this possession. Four seconds though to shoot for Arizona State. Tried the lob play. TCU breaks it up. An interesting call. I guess they said that Washington had possession last out of bounds on the baseline. So it'll be TCU basketball. I always wonder why sometimes teams don't come back and run the same play the same way. Where they got a nice jump hook right. from the big guy Washington inside Warren Washington. Instead of trying to do something else cute. I know it's sometimes teams just don't like to run the same play two times in a row. Coles with another rebound. Miles Jr. stepping into it. How about 
a third opportunity here for TCU. Nice shot by O'Bannon Jr. Getting on the glass. He's running in there from the three-point line. One second to shoot with one second. Drills it. Damian Ball has had few opportunities here tonight, but that might be his biggest. All six of his points coming from behind the three-point line. He's done a nice job distributing the ball, seven assists. Ended an eight-nothing Arizona State run. Avery said, go back to the big fella. Did he deliver? Quick span, used his body and went to his offhand and laid that one up. Yeah, we've seen this before in another life. Hakeem Olajuwon, quick spin on the baseline. Way to set him up. Yeah. Boy, he knew he had one step and he was at the rim. And that was his counter move because he is a left shoulder jump hook guy. But nice job going to your plan B. And Emmanuel Miller now with four personal fouls. So Miller and Coles on the TCU side with four. And Bannon Jr. might have some blood on his arm. And it was interesting when Andy interviewed Coach Hurley at halftime, and he was talking about the team was a little lethargic to start the game, or they're a little tired from playing in Dayton. He said, we don't get tired, we're in great shape. So both these coaches will, will use this break as a, as a quick timeout or whatever they can get out of it, whatever they can squeeze out of it. After NCAA coverage, don't miss a special presentation of Discovery's Street Outlaws, Fastest in America. And tune in Mondays at 8 p.m. for new episodes. Washington completes a three-point play. He's in double figures with 11. Back to a little 2-3 zone. It's given TCU something to think about. Yeah, they mix it up their defense. Man-to-man the -man is a fast ball. O'Pana Jr. will take it and make it. A season-high 15. Nissan tip-off show, eight games across CBS, TNT, and TBS over 12 hours. Out of the timeout, Arizona State's turn. And we're taking a peek at Washington. Instead, it's Cambridge Jr. Washington battling for it, though, into the hands of Cork. Oh, all six of his points coming in the second half in the final few minutes of the second half. Junior. No spots. 23. We got ourselves a game. The side was clear. And Mike Miles Jr. said, if no one's going to come help, I can get down to the hill with my speed and strength and give me a good bucket. Washington finds back door to Devin Cambridge for two. Nice pass. A little bit of a breakdown there on the weak side with TCU's defense. PG with the pump fake, gives it back to Ball. O'Pana Jr. gives himself some space. PV, not once, how about twice? And draws the foul. Oh, I thought it was a pick and roll. And they caught Chuck O'Pana Jr. He was going to come out and Hedge, beautiful play and good pass by yeah. Washington. Seven footer playing like point forward for the Sun Devils. I think that was a miscommunication. One guy was hedging and one guy was switching. Mm -hmm. TV, well off the mark. 67% free throw shooter. His first trip tonight. But he was hunting down his own miss, and he commits the foul his third. 
Right to the free throw line. Well, it's going to come down to free throws, it looks like. Both of these teams now in the double bonus. Three minutes left to play. See the timeouts. Bobby Hurley has three left. TCU with just one. Sitting at 62 points tonight. You see that 75 point mark, 75 or more, seems to be the magic number this year. Mm. Unusual for Collins to miss both. Yeah. He's got a good looking. Yes. He was. So she was 63%. Coles. Leaves it short. It'll stay here on the sideline. 237 left to play. I like that little play that you were talking about a couple of plays back where they cleared the left side for yeah. Miles to drive. To see him ghosting, pick and roll. Miles Jr. looking for it and he finds it. Cuts the lead to three. He's got 25 in the game. Gotta love this. <laughs> Execution on both ends. Who can get a stop without fouling? Two very evenly matched teams. Now the shoot. Collins trying to contact an offensive foul call. And he's got three. I think Mike Miles Jr. is getting himself a little rest right yeah. now. We talked about Miles needs to get downhill, attack the basket. And now he gives his body up for his team on the defensive end. And this was a guy we didn't know if he would play in the second half. Tweaked what appeared to be that right knee that he hyperextended earlier this season. We've got the officials at the monitor. Looking at the elbow contact. To Mike Miles. See if it would be upgraded. I, don't, I, I, I would say no. He's making a basketball move, and I don't think he caught him, you know, in the face. Raymond Natilli, lead official. Vladimir Voyard Tadal and DG Nelson, your yeah. officials. Looked like he was just trying to split the double team mm -hmm. and step through. You know, for a flagrant one, as a reminder, contact has to be excessive or unnecessary. And I thought that was a normal basketball play. If it's a flagrant one, it's not a normal basketball play. We got an explanation coming. Yeah, they were looking at the screening play at 213, but it's no flagrant foul on that play. A little pressure right now from the Sun Devils. All right, trailing by three. TCU with a chance to tie on this possession. Ball's going to go to Execution from both. And Mike Miles drew a lot of defenders to give Damian an easy look, an open look. Yeah. Mike Miles is doing everything. Assist, scoring, taking charges on defense. Collins gives Arizona State another run. Cambridge Jr. with the quick trigger. 
TCU with a chance for the go-ahead. Their last lead in the first half with about four and a half left to play. Everybody spread. What? Mike Miles Jr. gets blocked. Devin Cambridge came over and got a piece. Arizona State's turn. The seventh block for the Sun Devils tonight. Back door look. That pass is deflected. Here comes Ball. Doesn't have the numbers. And a foul against Cambridge Jr. And in the double bonus, that means two free throws come in. Arizona State tried to run a little elbow action. But now, before that, the tying three-pointer, little penetrating pitch. Mike Miles with the assist. I ball, mean, yeah, ball favorite. struggled in the first half. This went around. Yeah. Hit the backboard, then went back in. 68-67. The first lead for TCU since the first half. Defensive subs here. Trying to TCU is trying to get their best five-man defensive group on the floor. Bomb has been clutch. All 11 points coming in the second half. Arizona, yeah, Arizona State's probably going to get a timeout here. They've got two timeouts remaining after this one. Ooh, it's getting good. It has been good. Let's go from Denver. Most important things to consider. Arizona State still has a couple timeouts left. TCU has been sitting on their one timeout, and both of these teams will have two free throws with each foul committed. The final 32.6 se seconds left. Mike Miles with the 25 points. What do you see, Smitty? Well, we see this emphatic dunk, and you see Hybrid standing right near. Didn't look good for the TCU Horn Frogs, but he came back in that second half. And boy, as he put on his show, he has got downhill. He's been physical. You see he's limbed at the free throw line. 11 for 12 for 25 points. But now strategy-wise for both sides, if you're Arizona State, you have to run something where it's misdirection. Get Washington to set a screen for one of these smalls, and he died. And hopefully he can suck people in. And on the other end, for TCU, Avery, Mike Miles gets the basketball, and he makes the play. And Lisa, remember we talked about earlier in the game, both teams had one turnover. Now Arizona State has 13, and TCU has five. That's the difference. And TCU 15 second half points off turnovers. Collins looking to tie. And they're going to have to foul to stop the clock at 24.1. Well, they ran that play. Washington dove, drew. And I thought Collins should have came off and made a play to find somebody. He had DJ Horn back at the top, but he couldn't see him. And Devin Cambridge was forced to foul after this miss. He has fouled out of this game. Miles Jr. to the free throw line. He's 11 of 12 from there tonight. And unfortunately for um, Collins, he's missed those two free throws, remember? And in the layup. It's a big free throw. Makes it a three-point game. Smitty, are you fouling here? Well, I think it's a little bit too early. Yeah, 24 right. seconds. <laughs> I think you play solid defense and try to get a stop. And obviously, you don't want to give up a three. But if you do, you still should have a possession left. Here comes Collins. He'll call the timeout. Arizona State still has one left. What do you think Bobby Hurley draws up? Try to get a quick, good two. Uh, they don't necessarily need to go for a three here. Still have a timeout. So get the best available shot. If that's a three, take it. But I would imagine some type of a driving play 
downhill where you can get an old-fashioned three-point play going into the basket. And I, for me, for Arizona State, I am running something with DJ Horn. Him is a ghost screen where he sets a screen and then he gets a flare so he can catch and shoot or rip through and drive it. Six points in the second half for Horn. He was missed on that last play, Lisa, when they had a down pick for him. So I think DJ Horn is the guy you got to try to get a, a play for him. Yeah, and we'll see if Dev Desmond Cambridge Jr. is involved. He struggled a little bit, 4 for 15 from the field tonight. It's Collins taking it out. Two Horn gets the touch. Shot clock's not in play. Horn pulls for the touch. Let's watch this. That's individual play. DJ Horn knocks this down. Look at his shooting percentage tonight. He's five for nine from the field, four or five from the three-point line. They've missed him a few times, especially in that first half. He's had the hot hand for the Sun Devils. And Walker cut him off. He initially was trying to drive and get to his right hand. He got cut off. Nice little crossover step back and knocked down the three. Big shot. Well, we know where the ball is going for TCU. <laughs> Avery, as a coach, what would you do defensively against Mike Miles? Are you double teaming or are you letting your guy play one-on-one? -on -one? And who would you have guarding Mike Miles Jr. for well, the Sun Devils? Yeah, in this situation, number one, Mike Miles will not see single coverage, man, man coverage. I'm double teaming Mike Miles, making sure that he's forcing somebody else to score this basketball. I'm rotating the guys like Damian Ball because he is hot from three in the second half. And the one guy I, feel I would have regarding him is obviously with some length has to be Dave Desmond Cambridge because I love Frankie Collins but a little bit too small for Mike Miles Jr. He better get his shot off. Obana Jr. to take it out. 12.4 left to play. Here comes Miles Jr. to pick it up. I will trap this pick and roll. Working off the screen with Coles. There's the double team. They get it out of his hands. Cole 